What's going on guys? So uh, this is an update on the JM Bullion situation. Um, my uh, original video talking about my experience with JM Bullion, uh, where I had the problem and I had a package that was lost. If you haven't seen the video, I'll give you a quick recap. Basically, I ordered uh, a one tenth ounce gold coin on Black Friday, never showed up, had a problem, had bad communication, uh, got really annoyed, got really upset. They basically said that they couldn't give me a refund. Uh, got extra annoyed, extra upset, contacted my bank, bank uh, tried to contact them, was unable to, and eventually got a refund uh, from my bank, not from JM. Then I made my video saying that I would never get anything from them ever again, and it's a good example of uh, you shouldn't say never, or never say never, because here's the second order, which uh, happened to arrive just fine. So, going back a little bit here, um, I have to say the entire situation, it really bugged me. It really, really bugged me, the whole thing, because I like Jay and Bullion. As I mentioned in the first video, I've uh, ordered from them uh, numerous times previous to this bad experience. I talked to, I mean, all you guys commented. You know, a lot of you said, hey, that's messed up. And, you know, there's a bunch of people that commented and said, yeah, I'm really sorry to see that. But, you know, I've been ordering them from years and everything's been fine. And like I said, I mean, everything was fine. You know, I've had plenty of orders that, that arrived and I was very happy with them. I, I recommended them to people until it wasn't fine. That's how things work. Everything's great until it's not great. Um, but I gave it a lot of thought and I ended up talking to someone at the company that explained things a little bit further to me. And it really just kind of made me change my, uh, my opinion and uh, give them a second shot. All right, now the second shot happened about a week ago or so. And the order was resent out, and it arrived. It arrived today, so I actually got uh, the order. Um, printed here is my original order, which is going to be you know a little bit later. I'll explain why I printed that and why I have this highlighted. So I'm giving them a second shot. Um, like I said, the second order arrived fine. I was tracking it every single day, <laughs> wondering if it would arrive and arrive fine. I uh, came today. I'm very you know happy with it. I'll show the coin at the end of the video here because it is an absolutely beautiful coin. Uh, that I really wanted, and now I have it. So, in the first video, and the reason I'm making this video too is, I mean, I, you guys know I share all my experiences, and I'm not always right about things. Um, I do stick to my guns most of the time. I, I do have a very stubborn personality. Occasionally, someone might argue in the comments, and I'll kind of give a snarky reply, you know what I mean? It's just, it, it's defensive. That's just what happens. Sometimes I feel attacked, and I get defensive, and I'm not saying, you know, specifically with this particular uh, subject, but just randomly. So I might say something like, hey, you're dumb because of this. And I'm like, eh, no, I'm not really. And this is why you're dumb. And that's human nature, right? It's to get defensive on stuff. Now, when this whole situation started, I, I very much got defensive. I'm like, dude, I gave you money. You know, I know you shipped out the package, um, but nothing happened with it. And that's not acceptable. I really didn't think it was acceptable. But again, after talking with uh, an employee and then, you know, basically explaining everything in great detail, um, I realized that I was wrong about a couple things. And it's important for me to give the best, most accurate information possible. So it was important for me to do this update video and let you know what I was wrong about. I was wrong about them getting paid twice. And I have to say there was at least two people who commented who deal with insurance for a living uh, and basically said like, yeah, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna be able to double dip. They're not gonna get paid and then make an insurance claim, get paid again. And uh, both those people are right. That's just not something that happens. Um, that was a, a wrong assumption by myself, is that they were gonna get the money twice. Uh, actually, what I was uh, told, which makes a little bit more sense, I still don't agree with it that much, but it makes sense. Uh, I was wrong about them going through the postal service to get uh, insurance claims, okay? My assumption, which was wrong, you know, it's wrong to assume. Uh, I made an ass out of you and me, but that really just myself, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just thought that if they had a, uh, a missing postal package that they would go through the postal service, go through their insurance claim process to get their money back on a lost package. That is false. I was told by a representative for the company that they have their own insurance company and that's where they get their claims. And that is why they have this policy that they have is because if they don't let their insurance company know right away within, you know, whatever X amount of days from that last scan, then they won't get to make a claim through their insurance company and they're out the money. So that makes the, the, their policy makes more sense to me. 
You know, uh, I wish that they didn't do that. I wish that it was a longer duration of time. They had to see if a package would arrive. But, you know, like my grandfather used to say, you know, wish in one hand and crap in the other. <laughs> see what fills up first. Um, you know, wishful thinking is just that, wishful thinking. Um, but, yeah, so that that's something that kind of made me go like, eh, you know, I, I wish I knew that. But how would I know that? You know what I mean? Unless you just happen to randomly think of it and ask the question. So I was wrong to assume that they go to the Postal Service with uh, claims department uh, because I know that's a lengthy process and uh, very difficult, especially if you're a massive company and deal with thousands and thousands of packages. So, yeah, if a package goes missing, they have their policy that's very specific to them because of their insurance company. And that's how they get a claim. That's how they get their money back. And if they get their money back, they'll be able to give you your money back. That's how it works. So because I didn't contact them within a certain amount of days from the last scan, um, they were not able to make a claim. They did not get any money. And that coin is still floating around somewhere uh, on planet Earth. Who knows where? Maybe in someone's pocket. Maybe someone stole it who works the post office somewhere or a distribution center, sorting center. Um, it definitely wasn't delivered because it was the last scan happened way back in November and it hasn't been updated. You know what I mean? So who knows what happened to it? It could be lost, could be trapped somewhere. Who knows? Uh, and I, I'll still stick to it if that ever does arrive. I, I definitely contact them and, uh, you know, offer to buy it. But right now it's still up in the air. So, yeah, I was wrong about the, the claims. I was wrong about the insurance and that, that process. And that makes a little bit more sense. They have to ensure that if they're going to give a refund to someone that they get their money back too. It still sucks. You know, like I said, if you don't understand what's going on, and that's why it's so important for you to make these videos and, and bring awareness to this policy. Um, because if you do place an order with them, you have to keep an eye on that package and you have to contact them if you're not seeing a new scan, uh, which I'll get to in detail in a minute here. So yeah, that part of it I was, uh, I was wrong about. Um, and I wanted to give the correct information. It does make more sense as to why they have this very short period because that's how they have to make a claim. Now, another thing that I mentioned was how I couldn't get in touch with their claims department. Now, the rep told me that their records showed the claim department reached out once by phone but was unable to contact me. Now, I can't verify that for sure, but what I can tell you is that I have all numbers blocked on my phone. If you're not a contact on my phone, my phone does not ring. And my voicemail, I mean, I never check my voicemail. I don't get voicemails from any of my friends or family or anything like that. If they call me, I know because the phone rings or I see a missed call and I call them back. Um, so, like I said, I can't verify that, but their records show they did try to respond back. So, in all fairness, you know, at least that's what I was told. All right, so I guess I have to just believe that they did try to reach out to at least explain this to me. Had I got them on the phone and talked to them, it would have been the same story. They might have explained it then in detail, but I still would have been, you know, basically SOL um, just because I, I waited too long to contact them. So this is the very most important part here. Uh, like I said, I'm giving them a second shot here. Uh, well, I did give them a second shot and they, it did make it to my, my door, uh, which was nice. Now, this is another thing that I wanted to uh, to bring to everyone's attention because it's so important if you place an order with JM Bullion to read your emails. All right. So when you first place an order, you're going to get an automated email that just has the breakdown, I guess, you know, what you ordered. But then there's a processing time. You know, it could take a day or two or whatever to actually, you know, get your stuff packed up and shipped out. Once it's shipped out, they send you another email. And in that email, it does specify their policy. Okay. So this is something that I did personally miss. I got this email. I didn't see this line. I kind of just scrolled down. I looked at the tracking number. I put the tracking number in, you know, one of my apps, you know, that I'm watching for, for packages and stuff. Um, I did track that package. I just didn't know this policy at the time because I didn't read this email. But again, to be fair, I try very hard to be fair with everything uh, and sharing my experiences. It is right here in the email. Um, it'd be nice if they sent like a separate email that just says this, you know, but uh, you know, I get it. They can't send you 30 emails, but it is there. It is there. I went all the way back in my history. I found it. I printed it here so I could read it to you. So when you place your order and your order is shipped, the title will say, please open. This is all in capital letters. Please open attention required JM bullion order and whatever it happens to be has shipped. And in there it gives you a tracking number. 
and it says your order has shipped and in, in capital letters here this is a valuable shipment please be aware and attentive the carrier's tracking may not uh, produce results for one to two business days due to the timing of the shipping and pickup this is not unusual if you do not see initial tracking by the fifth business day please contact us at support at jmbullion.com next if there is an unsuccessful delivery attempt please communicate with the carrier immediately to ensure successful redelivery. In addition, if there is a delay of seven calendar days between scans, please contact us. Most important part, failure to contact us timely may result in a loss of coverage. Now, the rep was also telling me that during the holidays, they extend that to 10 days, although I didn't see that anywhere. Uh, I don't know if that's an official policy. You know, I would still stick with the seven days to be safe, even during the holiday season. Um, but it's here, you know, so I can't deny that. This is something that I glazed over. It's like, you know, when you sign a contract and the contract's got like, you know, 15 pages of stuff or whatever, it might be for like a cell phone or something you don't think is that big of a deal. You really should have to read everything, you know. So this is my fault. You know, I, it's not the first time I've been wrong about something. Uh, but I didn't want to point this out because I thought it was important. Um... This said, you know, pretty much in black and white, I should have contacted them with a certain time, which I didn't, you know what I mean? So, uh, like I said, I can't blame them. They have this policy. I don't like the policy. You know, I'll be very clear about that. I don't like this at all, but it's all stemming around the fact that in order for them to get a refund from their insurance company, that's what the insurance company requires. I wish they went with a different insurance company, but that's just, it is what it is. They deal with millions of dollars in precious metals and stuff, and I'm sure that's just, uh, maybe that's standard. Maybe that's uh, standard among other websites as well. I just did not uh, recognize it. I will absolutely be looking at all the policies, no matter what website I order from, if I do, you know, order online. But at the end of the day, they made it right. You know, they sent it out again. The second time here, it did arrive. Um, and, you know, as like I said, as things were explained to me, and they could have been like, I guess they could have been more um annoying and like hey buddy you know we told you you know and it's all right there and you, you know you're stupid for not realizing no they were pretty professional in how they explained it to me which was nice um and i felt just a little bit stupid you know <laughs> just just that much stupid uh just because i made the wrong assumption about the insurance claims and all that kind of stuff so now that i know how they get their money back if money is lost makes more sense so in order to give their customers a refund, they have to get a refund. They're not in the business of just losing money. I totally understand that. So at this point, I would say that if you're interested, I mean, because plenty of people comment to say like, hey, you know, I used to shop all the time, uh, but now, you know, I feel a little weird about it or I'm not going to order from them anymore. I think it's okay to order from JM Bullion. I just think that it is super, super important that you put a heavy focus on tracking your package and making sure that you follow this policy to a T. I wouldn't wait even the full seven days. If you get a scan and four or five days go by, I'd call them right away. I'd make that a note to call them, document the fact that you did not get a new scan just in case, just in case, just to be sure. Because if you wait like the full seven days and then you know life happens and you get busy and oh, I forgot to call them today and then you call them tomorrow, technically you didn't follow the policy, right? So yeah, uh, JM Bullion is back on the okay list for me. I probably have like six or seven different online bullion dealers that I like to look at prices all the time. I, I do have uh, more of a focus to try to buy it locally. Prices are up right now, if you haven't been paying attention to things. Uh, metals prices are up just because of the, the world conflicts and everything going on, which you guys know about. Um, you know, so I'm kind of on the back burner as far as uh, buying more precious metals, but I am trying to stash away a little bit of uh, fiat currency for that wonderful shiny stuff in the future if there's a dip in prices. Uh, I like to uh, be able to support you know, local business, but the coin dealers that, that I've gone to, at least my experience so far, they had some great prices, but they had low stock and everything. It's just hard for them to get metals, you know? So when there's that certain thing you want, what do you do? You jump online, you know, where you can find it. Um, so like I said, I mean, as far as my list of what I think is reputable, JM Bullion is still a reputable company. I mean, some people commented like, oh, what a scam. It's not a scam. I didn't quite understand it fully. Now that I do understand it fully, I don't like the policy. Let me make that clear. Not a fan of that policy, but I feel confident in ordering from them in the future. If they have something I wanted and the price was good, I would definitely buy from them again. But you bet your bottom dollar, I'd be checking that tracking number three, four times a day 
and making sure that I contact them every way possible if uh, time is elapsing and there's not a new scan. So it's important for me to make this video and uh, really just point out this, this policy as well as you know apologize uh, to any viewers who, uh, who saw that and got misinformation. I, I, you know, once in a while it happens. I shouldn't make assumptions on things. I was very, uh, very heated when I made that first video. You know, it's just, I was so annoyed and upset by the whole thing. It was, it was just a crappy feeling. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I got ripped off and, uh, you know, I just wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. You know what I mean? So there's no real, no good, uh, excuse for that, you know? So that is what it is. But, uh, like I said, in the future, if they got a good deal, I'll definitely get in on JM Bullion again. I will say this, I am not going to be ordering during the Christmas season. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's JM Bullion or, or a different, you know, uh, dealer. I'm just not going to buy precious metals around Christmas time. I know plenty of people do, and it's super tempting because they have those awesome Black Friday sales. Uh, but personally, I just have to worry about shipping. It doesn't matter what the policy is or anything like that. I just, it, it's just, there's too many packages. It's insane how many packages are floating around these days and how many people order stuff. I mean, I don't think that that there's just enough people dealing with the volume. It's just too big. Too many packages, not enough people handling them, and uh, more stuff is lost or stolen than ever in history. Uh, so I personally wouldn't be as comfortable ordering around Christmas time. I'd probably check my, uh, my local dealers um, that I can see in person. But, you know, the rest of the year, I'd have no problem with ordering from them. Like I said, it's just super, super important uh, that you check these, uh, these policies from these different companies and, and really just stick to them to make sure that you're covering yourself just in case something happens because things go lost. You know, it's not J.M. Bullion's fault that the post office lost my package, um, it, but it's a little bit my fault for not understanding the, the correct process. Now that I know the correct process, I gain some confidence back in ordering from them. So anyway, that is pretty much it. Now I want to show you this absolutely beautiful coin, which I, I wanted many months ago. So here it is. This is a 2021 um britannia all right so beautiful image on here a lot of glare because i already have it i already put it in one of these uh capsules but hopefully you guys can see that one tenth ounce nine 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 fine gold four nines fine and this one uh it's actually surprising i don't know if this is the only um one tenth ounce piece that actually has some kind of security you know feature built into it but this little circle down here uh, if you hit the right angle, it shows that little scepter head. Again, that's supposed to be you know, helping the anti-counterfeiting. Uh, <laughs> There's a little black hair in there somewhere. Um, it's probably for my head, because yes, I'm still growing my hair out. But anyway, uh, I just think it's really cool. It's a beautiful, beautiful design. And there's the, uh, the back, the queen's head. And there you go. It's worth uh, 10 pounds face value, but I don't think anyone's going to... You know, actually spend it at a store or anything. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Finally got it for the uh, collection here. I'd love to get a, a one ounce Britannia sometime in the future, but it would be the distant future. <laughs> right now, prices are pretty darn high. So there you go, guys. An important update. I was uh, a little wrong. Uh, I hate to admit it. You know, no one wants to admit they're wrong, but I guess part of being an adult is uh, is doing that. That very thing. Hey, I was wrong. Uh, my mistake and moving on so that's pretty much it moving on forward but like I said uh, it's in the past I don't like holding grudges I'm not a fan of boycotting so many people boycott stuff and I felt myself being a little hypocritical I'm not gonna get into great detail but like back when Benchmade had that that whole drama with the you know getting rid of the guns for the local PD and that kind of stuff so many people jumped on the bandwagon and boycott you know uh, Benchmade because they're anti-second amendment and all that kind of stuff and I hated it. I hated the whole thing. It was just bad politics. Um, you know, the, the thing with Coca-Cola that came out, what was it, last year or two years? I forget. It was a while back, whatever, being anti-white. Like, you know, it's just politics ruin everything. You know, once you start getting into these different companies' political stances and views and stuff, if you really looked into all the thousands of products that we use every single day, and I said this many times, you'd be living in a hut with a little cloth around your crotch uh, because you wouldn't like anything that anyone does anywhere. It's very hard to, uh, to just start getting into the political side of companies and products. Like when I buy stuff, I'm buying the product because it's decent quality at a decent price and I need to use it, you know what I'm saying? Or it's something I just wanna use. You know, I don't need to have gold, I don't need to have knives. These are just my hobbies 
It's what I enjoy doing uh, and investing in and, and spending money on. Um, but it's hard to get into the political side of things. And like I said, you know, making that video, I almost felt like I was starting a boycott. And I didn't like that. Uh, I'm not about that. Uh, politics really do ruin everything. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, I thought it was important to, to share all that information with you guys. Um, of course, you can let me know your experiences down below. Uh, but I think that no matter who you're ordering from, if you're buying something online, and it doesn't have to just be precious metals, it could be your next knife order, you know, start looking at policies. Uh, it's very important to understand how things work. And, you know, I'm guilty of not doing that in the past, but I, I certainly learned my lesson now and uh, we'll be doing that in the future. So that's all. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.